While information is abundant on the internet, our attention is a finite and valuable resource. To use our attention as efficient as possible, tech companies have developed a new kind of capitalism, which accumulates behavioral data to bring advertisement technology to perfection. We call it surveillance capitalism. As soon as you go online, multiple parties track everything you're doing. We live in constant civilians and your online behavior is used for targeted advertisement. But how did this happen and what are the consequences for our society? Online civilians is omnipresent. They know your location, your search history, the install apps on your phone, the websites you visit and what you read and watch. They also monitor your social media posts private conversation and some messengers, as well as emails, what you buy, as well as all the metadata which comes with it. And the list goes on and on. But who exactly do I mean with they? I speak about civilians capitalists, companies which offer products and services to extract our behavioral user data and make predictions and modifications to our future behavior. The common saying, if the service is free, you are the product is not exactly right. You are not the product, your behavior data is the raw material, the supply to produce the prediction products which are then sold to advertisers. Surveillance capitalists see your behavior data as their proprietary and use the data to feed machine intelligence algorithms in order to fabricate sophisticated prediction products. These prediction products are then traded on behavioral future marketplaces. The more data is fed into this machine intelligence based means of production, the more powerful is the prediction product. Let's use search as an example to illustrate this concept. Every online search creates more insights about us. This data is then structured and fed to machine learning algorithms. When trained with enough data, these algorithms can give accurate predictions on what you're going to click on, based on your search input and past behavior. The outcome is that if you use Google search to do research about a particular product, you will suddenly see fitting advertisements following you around the internet almost everywhere you go. They simply declared our private experience theirs for the taking, for the translation of data, for their private ownership and their proprietary knowledge. The capitalistic logic of accumulation works perfectly since information can be extracted with zero marginal cost. Their systems, which aim to modify our behavior, are designed outside of our awareness. They operate in the dark to maintain our ignorance. The information technology is turning the world into information. The result is that these new knowledge territories became the subject of a political conflict. The first conflict is over the distribution of knowledge. Who knows? The second is about authority. Who decides? Who knows? And the third is about power. Who decides? Who decides? Who knows? There are three major economic principles that are dictating the direction of this kind of capitalism. The economies of scale imply the more behavioral data they can extract, the better the prediction. The economies of scope mean the more varied the data sources are, the higher its prediction value. And the economies of action describe the modification of behavior shaping it toward a desired commercial outcome. So let's take a short look at the history of the most prominent surveillance capitalists. While surveillance capitalism was invented by Google around 2001, Mark Zuckerberg went crazy about it. Facebook executed behavioral studies on millions of users without registering the studies, informing users or asking for permission in the first place. They gave out private data, even private chat conversations to third-party app developers without any kind of vetting. They also supported or at least accepted political manipulation on their platform via Cambridge Analytica and many more. They also violated data protection regulations and keep shadow profiles. Obviously, I could go on for another two hours, but I think you get my point. The other behemoth is obviously Google, as an undisputed giant in the internet sector. Considered we ignore the Chinese market for a moment. Google has the de facto monopoly or a very strong position in a small oligopoly in dozens of markets. They don't organize the world's information to make it useful. They surveil everything and everybody, 
in order to make your life searchable. Besides search, they also control maps with Google Maps, online browsers with Chrome, mobile operating systems with Android, the online advertisement with AdSense, online website analytics, emails with Gmails, and many, many more. The combination of these monopoly powers grants the company unprecedented control over our market economies, our society, and every single individual. A rather simple example is a change in a page rank, which determines on which position your search result is listed on Google search. We've already seen cases in which Google changes the algorithm and suddenly the search traffic drops or increases by up to 50% for certain news outlets. The outcome is that their services are superior to everything we've seen before. They can further amass power and influence to control and manipulate our society at their will. A recent example of the ongoing dispossession and fraudulent business practices of Google is the case of the lyrics provider Genius, which caught Google red-handed of using their content and presenting it as their own. This might seem like a minor incident, but it's just one out of thousands of examples of how this company threatens the core values of our society. While surveillance capitalism needs technology, technology doesn't need surveillance capitalism. Unfortunately, this kind of economic logic already began with the transition into the real world. The famous game Pokemon Go, which is developed by Niantic, a game company formed as an internal startup in Google, generates revenue streams from businesses which purchase lure modules to attract people to a specific location in the real world. One of their biggest customers is actually McDonald's, which observed a revenue spike at restaurants equipped with lure modules. So it's no longer restricted to individual companies or even the internet sector. It has spread across a wide range of products, services and commercial industries, including insurance, retail, healthcare, finance, entertainment, education, transportation and many, many more. Every product which has smart, intelligent or personalized in its name is feeding the civilian mechanism. If you buy a smart home, Nest thermostat, which is owned by Google, it requires a user to read more than 1000 contracts and privacy policies, since everybody is sharing information with third parties. With technology, you don't need to overwhelm human strengths. You just have to conquer human weaknesses. And let's be honest, Nobody reads more than one privacy policy of a consumer product. Civilians capitalists are incentivized to create even more addictive products following the model of the attention economy. Pull to refresh, infinite feeds or push notifications are just the tip of the iceberg. 70% of the YouTube traffic is driven by recommendations. These recommendations are tilted towards a spectrum of crazy town, including conspiracy, theories, anti-vaccine and big food. So the predictive algorithm doesn't show you what is best for you, but instead was what is in the economic interest of the platform provider. So this whole debate goes way beyond the question of a free market economy, since the dispossession of knowledge and the behavioral modification of millions and billions of people is a threat to democracy itself. Their business practices change how society works and lead to significant social inequality and spikes in depression among our youngest generation. The quote from sociobiologist E. O. Wilson sums it up pretty good. We have paleolithic emotions, medieval institutions and godlike technology. To regulate a new emerging kind of capitalism is extremely difficult. We just began to understand how it even works and just came up with a terminology. Meanwhile, it's spreading throughout the world like wildfire and is adopted and integrated by more companies and marketplaces every day. Lobbying for an end of commercial surveillance on the internet is like asking all Henry Ford to make each Model T by hand. Its demands are an existential threat which violates the underlying business logic of the survival of the entity. They need massive amounts of detailed behavioral data in order to train their machine intelligence to produce uh, sophisticated prediction products. On the other hand, the rhetoric of the pioneers of civilian capitalism has been a textbook example of misdirection, euphemism and obfuscation. 
they will do everything to protect their profit margins. We need politicians who understand the business practices as well as the consequences of these business models and approach them with an iron fist. Democracy has slept while civilian capitalists amassed an unprecedented concentration of knowledge and power. In her latest guest article in The Guardian, Shoshana Zuboff provides us with a regulatory approach. Step 1. Outlaw the secret theft of private experience and markets which trade predictions on the behavior of individuals for advertisement purposes. Step 2. New laws and regulations must favor companies which use business models contrary to the logic of civilian capitalism. Step 3. Our society needs governmental support for collective actions protecting the rights of individuals and educating the broader public. To conclude, we can say that companies who follow this kind of new capitalism not only monitor and control what you see, read and watch to a considerable degree, but also manipulate your behavior according to their economic interests. While surveillance capitalists know everything about us, we know very little about them. The pioneers in this field are already the most valuable publicly traded companies in the world. And now this kind of capitalism is spreading out throughout the real world and is adopted by uh, companies who are a century old. The technological trend of artificial intelligence will only increase the demand for data and increase the, our reliance on these kind of algorithms. And the attention economy it creates platforms which are intended to be as addictive as possible. Now you might get privacy fatigue, which is a sense of weariness towards privacy issues in which one believes that there is no effective means of managing personal information on the internet. And I can totally understand that. It is overwhelming. But every one of us can implement countermeasures to take back part of our independence without feeding the data kraken. While not easy, there are a couple of things you can do against it. Avoid their services whenever possible. In the video description, you will find a data detox kit, which helps you find existing alternatives. Another important aspect is the protection of your privacy. You can use privacy tools such as the Tor browser, a virtual private network (VPN), the Brave browser, or add-ons like NoScript or the Privacy Badger. And we need more awareness for this topic. You can pressure your local politicians to address this issue and send this video to your friends and colleagues. Voice your concerns and demand a new kind of fiduciary for predictive machine learning algorithms. And an amplification transparency so the public can evaluate how often a certain um, content gets recommended on these platforms. The combination of artificial social systems, our predictum, yeah, machine intelligence and addictive platforms downgrade human nature and they benefit the richest from the rich. And if you're interested in enthusiastic about Libra, Zuckbuck, then just watch what Andreas Antipanopoulos has to say about that. Facebook is launching, presumably next month, uh, their own coin. I don't, we, we joke and we call it Zuckbucks. More than anything else, this is a surveillance coin. It is uh, the worst kind of surveillance coin connected to the worst kind of surveillance company that's exercising the worst kind of surveillance capitalism. Right? So, you want to play in that? I would never. I don't have Facebook applications. I don't have an account. I don't use it. It's not on my phone. I would never touch that stuff. You want to go there? Great. Remember, every time you make an easy transaction and you hear the little ding-ding sound of that, remember, that's the sound of democracy dying. That's the sound of independence dying. That's the sound of, of, of personal privacy dying. And you just made someone rich while killing all of the things that matter in free societies. If you're interested in the topic and want to learn more about it, I can highly recommend the, the content of the Center of Humane Technology from Tristan Harris as well as the book The Age of Civilian Capitalism by Susanna Zuboff. Uh, both of them were the primary sources for this video. Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next video and as always, own your keys.